Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. It is perfect. Let's go! Let's go! Third. Let's go! Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one and of course, you gotta get the coffin skin. Yo, 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 and away we go. Happy, happy Saturday night for each and every one of you. I'm just glad that I'm able to work tonight because, you know, things were getting a little crazy here for me personally. So, uh, good to see. Oh, I got to do a quick test, chat. Oh, my ear volume just went in the toilet, but we'll, we'll still go with it. I think I might need to be stay plugged in here, so. Uh, yeah, I got off late for work today, so basically just trying to race home to make sure I can start on time. And then, yeah, just trying to, trying to keep everything kosher and just, you know, of course, the one night that I didn't have everything properly lined up the way it's supposed to here, you know. Uh, but happy Evo weekend to each and every one of you as well. Uh, the yearly fighting game tournament out in Las Vegas. Um, good news. Everybody that went in from Edmonton, there's about seven or eight of them. The, all of them have made it out of pools and are in the uh, eliminations go, coming uh, over the next couple days here. So uh, a local guy uh, actually t uh, won the Blaze Blue Grand Fantasy, uh, the Blaze Blue uh, Evo all together. So Edmonton well represented and... Uh, of course, I'm not an official member of the Edmonton FGC just for the fact I don't play enough, but it's so cool to see how high quality of everything we have here in uh, in northern Alberta, including the wrestling, because yeah, I put out the post yesterday. In the in the month of August up here, we're getting what the hell. It just kicked me right out of the app. All right, that was weird as all hell, but at least we didn't miss anything. Oh, wow. They're in that new uh, eSports stadium in uh, in Arlington here, so it's actually a pretty neat setup I see here. Granted, they're only going to be able to fit about 1,200 people, but if you can make it loud, and let's face it, when it comes to uh, when it comes to wrestling in the summer, it's hard to get people out for a show. Like you, you, you do have your dedicated fans, but at the same time, you don't want to be sitting inside all day. Interesting get up, interesting setup here. We're gonna have to see how the uh, camera works out for a lot of this. So, I will say it is a lot more high depth. I think is the best way to put it. High depth picture, and it's cool to see the first week that they actually got everything jam packed here. Makes you wonder what it's gonna look like when they. Uh, I heard some people actually a little bit upset about uh, the repelling from the roof spot. I I'm glad they waited the extra week until uh, Owen was gone, so or the Owen tournament was gone, so would have been a little bit lack of class to do it the same week that uh, So we're actually starting out with a Beast Mortos against Darby Allen, which Like, like for everything that Mortos does, he's like, 
you, you talk about these people that lose things to WWE or TNA. TNA actually lost Black Taurus to uh, AEW. And he's another one of those AAA guys that decided to uh, take the boot out of there. But he couldn't keep his name, so they gave him the name uh, The Beast Mortos instead. Really interesting aesthetic here, by the way. I would like it if they wouldn't... Uh, I guess you sort of have to shoot it against the backdrop of uh, the the building. It gives it a real, I, I get a vibe of remember during the pandemic when it, WWE had their cameras shooting that way. Actually, AEW did the same thing too. They had to do it that way. So it's different. It's nice to see that there are fans around it. And I guess if you're not going to be able to set bleachers going up, it would have been nice to see some risers there to get get more people in, but bees in me. But how are you all doing tonight? I hope you're doing well. It's extremely smoky up here in uh, the old Edmonton world right now. Uh, fires up north here causing pretty much uh, very hard breathing conditions and a lot of... Uh, the one thing I will say, it does keep the temperature down for the most part for, during the day. He's a luchador. Of course he's going to move that fast, Nigel. Darby always scares you when he does that shot to the outside. Because if somebody misses, it's going to be one of those big splats. Just straight up splat down. But we still need to look for that spot where they're going to knock out. Uh... Oh, Jesus. Sorry, some breaking news coming down here. I want to check this out. Oh, it's the same one. Okay. So good, good shout out. Great shout out to uh, the man known as True, True underscore Calamity on uh, X for winning uh, Blaze Blue Tag at evo today so like i said it, it, it's great to see a lot of local talent <coughs> showing up and showing off the to the world how good we really are so but it's interesting we got four right now i think it's like four or five schedule matches that are supposed to be real there's some real storylines behind them. You got the uh, Sky Blue challenging anyone, so Akaro Shida stepped up. Or Sky Blue challenged Akaro Shida after she won last week. And then uh, you also have the Lumberjack match between uh, Deanna Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa. Yeah, that's not going to end in chaos. And then the underscore oh god Darby might be dead that Samoan drop that he does so easily like Jacob Fatu I, I will admit is a lot more impressive to do that for the fact that he's bigger when he does it but nonetheless it is still a very impressive move we got the Patriarchy versus the Bang Bang Gang to uh, settle up the trios titles once again. I think it's a very smart way to get rid of six titles out of that group of nine, but that's just me. Darby with a springboard splash there. 
Pretty awesome the way that Darby's working us out here. Darby trying to go for the coffin drop. How the hell did he squeak, squeak that one out? Ow. Darby might be knocked out. Speaking of being knocked out, uh, want to wish our condolences, well, <clears throat> our best wishes to uh, Dalton Castle, who's going to be out for the remainder of 2024 due to injuries suffered in that match against Roderick Strong last week. If you anybody watched, he legit got knocked out in that match. So I'm assuming it's another concussion, which means he's going to be out for X amount of time. Coffin drop to the outside. All right. I appreciate them talking about a sellout here, but seriously, the sellout is what? Maybe 1250. Granted, it's more than anything they would get up in Hamilton or anything like that. Sorry, I just need to do one more test here. <laughs> Try to get the AEW chats going. And Dar Darby's going to end up getting injured out of this, probably. <clears throat> All right, Darby turned inside out once again. Very nice spear. But yeah, once again, thank you everybody for checking this out, whether you check it out live or checking it out on VOD. Whether that be on Twitch or on YouTube. You see our bot has corrupted somebody real quick. Jesus! What a shot. Darby will never stay down, but he just needs to get out for a three count. Ooh, spit on Darby. All right, that ain't gonna hand. That gonna last. Nice little code red. But, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see where Darby could take this uh, what level he's going to go to for insanity next Wednesday. Uh-oh. What in the hell? 
All right, Darby's gotta be dead. Darby's gotta be dead. D D dead. They're giving him time for this opening contest. I'm, I'm impressed. And I think this is Darby's first match back since uh, Double or Nothing, so. I, I love how Tony's trying to cover up for what he's saying here and just try to refix everything. Oh God, that was a little over rotation. That'll be it. That crucifix bomb looked horrific to say the least. That just looked plain old nasty to me. But that really doesn't surprise me with a guy like Darby, right? I really hope they claim still get beaten up, whether it's day of show, whatever. I don't mind either way, but... So we got the trios championship match. We got the two women's matches. We also got Broderick Strong taking on the guy now known as Big Tom as part of the conglomerate, Tomohiro Ishii. Every dishwasher in the world is getting upset right now. Mick G, how you doing tonight? Hope you're doing well, sir. And we're just Darby showing off scars from uh, falling through glass right now. No, I hope everything's going well for you, sir. And uh, I, I love this, that the Bucks actually really don't do any extra promo work for the shows. And that's one thing I've always complained about. <laughs> you can say whatever he wants because he knows the Bucks aren't showing up tonight. Jack versus Darby. That's not a matchup I expected. I expected more of a Mark Briscoe thing. Not, not that I consider that it could be a bad match, but at the same time, we're getting another Pillars match out of it, which they still want to try and shove the uh, Pillars thing down our throats. That's fine, but... It's just interesting to see where those pillars are right now. One is the top of the company. One might as well not be in the company.
I love this for Billy. It's about as close as you can say to cut the shit than uh, in, in any other way that you can say without swearing. Gonna be nice seeing Sheeta out here tonight. Once again, by the way, repping the uh, Sheeta Cami shirt tonight, which Cami's pretty see-through, but many people won't complain about that. Had to wear a Street Fighter collab shirt with Evo being on this weekend, so. No, th this will be fun. Sky Blue's getting the opportunity to work some extra people that she normally wouldn't have got a chance with. Now with Julia Hart out for a while, we don't know how long. It, it allows Sky Blue to get the opportunity to expand, grow. And she's gone away from the white back to the black tonight. This guy wanted to step up, which this definitely is going to be a step up from a lot of the competition she's been having. You like this ramp? This, uh, I, I like it. it. It gives me more of a New Japan feel to it. One thing I'd like to see, though, if they could get the back rows elevated, like uh, more of a more of a bowl shape here instead of just a flat ground, you can make twelve hundred people look more like eighteen, nineteen hundred that way, right? Like I, I don't want to compare brands because it's not fair to either brand to do so, but. That's something that NXT excels in the fact that they have the it makes it look bigger than it actually is. Phoenix versus Tony Nese. We're finally gonna see Phoenix get a win tonight. And we're all gonna hear, yeah, why aren't you guys in blood and guts instead? Oh, and uh, McGee, I don't know if you heard about the big Tom uh, coronation for uh, for Tomohiro Ishii. Mark Briscoe has officially proclaimed him as Big Tom. And Sheeta just said, nope, we ain't playing this game no more. What is she doing? Okay. Nice shot by Sheeta there coming off the ropes, but. It's good to see Sky back since Julia's hurt. Well. Our new picture picture, we call in the match. So she just gonna try and work over the crowd. You had to jinx it there, McGee, didn't you? Right on her knee. Got your AEW crate. Came with the Bruv shirt. Yeah, I got. I'm. I'll be honest. I'm a little disappointed in that Bruv shirt. Like, could you have a little bit more of a? Uh, More of a chance to do anything a little creative with that. Like, I wouldn't mind picking up the... Uh, I 
Oh my, I, I love Tony going after Nigel there, but I, I wouldn't mind picking up the uh, Will Ospreay jersey. The jersey is sweet. Yeah, like if I have the if I have the money, I will. I I do have to order. Uh, they got the Bucks uh, the Bucks Tech and Eight shirt. So I want to pick that up here, and I'm just going to see what else is available this weekend. Oh, they had to call the match. Yeah, she hyperextended her knee there. That sucks. They're going to have to get some medical help here. and It sucks doing like live TV having this happen. But sometimes you just can't help it. Hopefully she's okay and, you know, it's only temp, like. Well, they're carrying her out, so. And she is putting some weight there. Oh, the haters are going to be lined up. I'm surprised they aren't already. So they had to officially call her the winner. Nobody cares. They're just trying to kill time. That royally sucks. She's already got a brace on that knee, so... Like, I, I don't think it's anything intentional or anything that could have been really accounted for there. But when you are bouncing off the ropes, it's tough that you're... Oh, we might get a Lance Archer match. That's cool. <laughs> he's been pushing online for more tv time well he might get it tonight just because they need to fill a spot tony Khan could have been literally hey go fill him a spot right now Oh, they're going to show the Jericho segment. Jericho's about to die. Officially, I do have to throw this out because we are doing a Jericho segment. What the hell is that? No. Sorry, I got to do that one more time here. Just What the hell is that? When I saw Larcher live, he was a big man. I'm not small, and he was bigger than... He's like 6'5", I think. 6'5", 6'6". Why does Jericho look all saggy and horrible?
Because he's saggy and horrible? I, I completely agree with you, sir. I would turn down the learning tree at every single possibility here. There we go. What the hell is that? Sorry, my, my earbud's not working right to say, and I didn't get a chance to look at it. I'll have to look at it after we're done here. So that pretty much was an entire segment of stalling here. Just to try to figure out what the hell they're going to be doing now that Cheetah's out, or uh, Sky Blue's out there. I think that was supposed to be two segments. When you only have five matches scheduled... I would say give uh, the la give uh, the other ladies match a little more run too, but who knows in this case? Because realistically, there should be uh, plenty of time, and the fact you have all those ladies around there, you can make a real schmaz out of it. As we get the picture, or we get the uh, live feed, they just uh, have the ref hang out outside. And... Well, I do have to say thank you and welcome, everybody. Uh, we're a half hour in. The hell? TSN kicked me out of the app again tonight. Unless somebody above me has a Roku TV as well, then that would sincerely piss me off here. I just can't wait for January when the deal comes up and hopefully they get uh, AEW on Sportsnet so we can watch it on a normal channel. But uh, just a reminder, after we're done here, uh, we're going to be uh, doing a little WWE 2K24. Uh, we have our Backlash PLE in my GM mode. Uh, Paul Heyman's royally screwed us under and uh, has forced our... All our singles champions are not allowed to be on the cards, so... We're going to have some interesting setups here, so... They don't know what they're doing right now. Tony, you got a book on the fly a little better here, my friend. Heyman sucks. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, he played his power card. That's the power card ECW has that they can take any week and block three of your champions. I got to realize they're going to do that on week one every single freaking time. So we're going to have a uh, couple steel cage matches there. We're going to. We're going to make the best of it. Is this going to be hologram? No, Tony Nese. Yeah, Tony Nese, who's going to be beaten in about a minute and a half. 
Just do what WWE usually do. Show no love to the tag belts. <laughs> You can tell that Nice has been given some promo time, right? Well, they do. They are around the Cowboys, so this makes a lot of sense. So we do get the debut of Hologram tonight, too, which uh, uh, was a wrestler in AAA and MLW under the name of Ramos. He was the guy that everybody thought was going to be either Sammy Guevara or Ricochet. So, my lawyer, the I didn't know he was Tony Crucifino. Yeah, no. Yeah, here we go. This this should be a two minute match, but I'd love to make it like twenty. To uh, paraphrase our friend Zodiac, all the belts. But it's nice going to get an opportunity to see uh, Phoenix on Collision or or Dynamite where he actually gets an opportunity to get a win. Seems like every time he comes in, he's just finding ways to lose. As we see here... Uh, Phoenix just, he's, he's got an extra little pep in his step here because he knows he's winning. Abrahantes all fired up. Once again, you put the, you put the Penta, you put Penta and Ray in blood and guts. You put uh, FTR blood and guts. Put anybody in blood and guts. Let's get the damn claimed out of there. Even Billy Gunn sees that he's, that they're not ready to go for it. FTR is coming out tonight, hopefully with an update. Uh, they're probably... They're, it's probably their typical babyface promo that they want to face somebody at... Uh, at Wembley, probably the Bucks. I will not put all my eggs into that basket until I actually see it, so... But I hope things go. I hope things are going well your way here. We're piled in with a bunch of smoke here in in town. So the one good thing about it is the temperatures have been relatively cooler. It's warmed up now later in the day, but it definitely has been cooler earlier. Yeah, Motor City Machine Guns are theoretically headed to WWE. All signs point to it. I'll worry about it when they actually show up. That's one of the very few teams I could expect to see go straight to the main roster, but... The one thing I wonder is... Uh, WWE doesn't like tags, though. They may not like... Yeah, like... Apparently next week they're having a gauntlet match to determine their number one contenders on SmackDown. Which includes their only five teams that are available right now. Oh, we got three hours of wrestling next week. All right. 
Well, note to self, we're not doing a WWE next week. Or WWE 2K24 next week. On Saturday. And then the week after, SummerSlam. So we're just going to be doing a couple Wednesdays here. So I think we are going to do the... Uh, the dual sidecast again for SummerSlam and uh, and Collision. I'm just gonna try and set it up so that WWE's on my uh, monitor, so that the sound can't go through to the microphones. That way, WWE can't copyright crap. I, I love how uh, Nigel's like, don't insinuate until you actually know. Well, I know, so to hell it. Just talk louder or get a louder guest? <laughs> no, uh, ba basically the TV background noise... Uh, AEW doesn't give a crap about theirs as long as the video's not there. But, uh... But WWE does, so... Their bots are a little different. Let's not have two injuries in the same uh, night here, back-to-back -back matches. All right, that's going to suck. Oh, nice job by Nice there. Now, where's Penta in all this? That's what I'd be saying if I was uh, Shivani right now. Where's Penta in all this? It's always Remsburg. Remsburg's the guy that always catches the guys. That that that's pretty much a fact on these. Is it Petra's caught? I think it's September. I don't know if Penta would be uh The Penta character would definitely get neutered a fair bit, I feel. Just because Penta's supposed to be a very dark individual. And they even had, Ma even Malachi Black's gimmick was a little, uh, or Alistair Black, sorry, in the other promotion. Who knows? Like, there's a whole bunch of, whole bunch of ways you could go with that. Oh, Phoenix is going to take care of Sterling. Oh, and here comes Nice. That is a pretty neat walkway here. Oh, God. That's a yeet. Yeah, when it comes to contracts, personally, I just wait to see who shows up where, right? Because we really could have multiple people go multiple places and multiple times here. And you never really know when a contract's up until somebody literally tells you it. Even then, it's half the time it's not true.
Oh, God bless Nigel. Jesus. So have you heard the rumor that there's a possibility that uh, Double or Nothing could be moved to Texas Stadium? Like Double or Nothing Texas Hold'em, I do believe is what they're what they're going to be calling it. I think we're going to see a lot of movement soon. I think we'd have to. There aren't that many uh, moving parts that are coming in around cri Christmas, so. I think once we... Could, could there be a way that we possibly could get a, a couple debuts at all in in Wembley? So I'll tell you this. I know that I know this isn't gonna happen. I know that everybody says, "Oh, there is no way this is gonna happen." But could you imagine? And and just let me throw this out here. Rebecca Quinn debuts right after the TBS title match between Brit and Mercedes. She comes out to that crowd, that many eyes, that much buzz. To me, if we could get that, everybody says that, you know, AEW will never catch up to WWE, and I don't think it honestly will, but that definitely will put it in a good spot. Oh my God, Phoenix. I think if you want to make a statement like that, that's how you can do it there. Doesn't need to catch up, just be a solid number two. Absolutely. And not the number two that uh, WWE thinks it is. <laughs> oh, God. Phoenix just effortlessly over the top rope. Now, can we get Pinto out there to help everybody out? And of course, Sterling's out there with his handkerchief trying to wake up his guys. So Sterling apparently is a pretty good wrestler. It just, he fits the gimmick so well as that snooty lawyer. <laughs> you see the scarf go fly at the same time? WWE's tiptoeing so, so bad story some bad stories to start up people look That's how AEW started, right? So people wanted an alternative. But uh did you hear the news that they're soft releasing uh all the AEW dynamites on Max right now down the States? They are being posted down there. They are official, but things are the page is loaded and that. Yeah, and I I won't step off that, Nick G at all. Triple H is great for uh title feuds and setting up title stories, but the rest is just cringeworthy. Alright, Phoenix, good job here. So two and a half matches in an hour. That's decent. Give it time to breathe here. That real awkward segment with uh, Sky Blue getting injured there. My period, the Rudy, the white six. It's too early to tell, honestly, Big G. I, I know you can say that, and I, I, I get where you can say that. 
you got to see them in the rig. You got to see where it folds out. Then you could say they've been wasting it. But to me, I, I think it's way too early. Well, I'll guarantee you the Trinos title will get time tonight. Yeah, the timing seems off on everything tonight. Like, literally, they're fading the commercial real quick. And I can't see Bo carrying a stable. Well, right now we're in a position where we really don't need to know whether they are and where he is or not. No, oh, this thing's just getting annoying and it's not producing the volume it's supposed to. So I'm just going to, I'm going to wing it tonight. So bear with me if some of the sounds I don't catch right away. But, um, yeah, he's not really con but I I can see where you say he's not very really convincing, but I'm thinking maybe it's gonna be Alexa Bliss is gonna be the one who's eventually carried that stable. And I do think she could be convincing enough. If you let her go and let her run. But who who even knows if she's coming back? Like I, I hope everybody realizes that you don't necessarily need to come back, right? Like if you enjoy your life outside of wrestling, maybe you wanna uh just enjoy wrestling. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Just enjoy wrestling from the side. Enjoy family life more importantly. Oh, and uh, completely off topic here, but uh, sure she's loving her time with the new baby. Absolutely. And I'm sure Rebecca's doing the same thing right now, enjoying time with her kids and, you know, sp spending a little time being mommy as you try to feel better and whatnot. And a lot of people lose perspective on that quite often. The fact that they don't realize that, you know, wrestling isn't the be all end all of everything. Like, sure, the, I, I was like that for years where I thought wrestling was the be all end all, had to. You had to have everything a part of it and a whole smattering of stuff here, but. Sorry, I'm just looking at myself right now and I'm seeing that I'm pretty washed out. Yeah, we'll go with that for now. But, uh, no, and, oh, uh, what I was going to mention there, completely off topic here. If uh, you're a fighting game fan, uh, there's a bit of a bobshell drop today during EVO. Uh, the classic game SVC versus Capcom Chaos. Or SVC Chaos, I believe is what it's called. Uh, FTR. Um, SVC Chaos was announced as a remake that's been released on Steam today and PlayStation 4 as a Monday. Monday, it's on PlayStation and Switch. No Xbox release again because, once again, Xbox is not what a Xbox One releases. So everybody's saying F you and, uh, yeah, PlayStation's taking over. At this point. Uh. Oh, and what, while we're watching this replay, I want to wish uh, Takeshita congratulations on his first win in the G1. He won his uh, first round robin match in the tournament. S-Box seems to be a bit stampy lately. Absolutely. It could be just that it's a Sony event and they didn't want to announce the Xbox part, but they've also got this policy that they don't want to play. They don't want any more Xbox One games. Walk 
Even with the raise of the price, the oil on the ultimate to get some day one games, yeah. I don't mind that. I, I I think the cheaper one was just more of a get yourself online and stuff, and it was basically a glorified gold, right? Oh, and um, the Xbox 360 store officially closes next Monday. So not this Monday, but next Monday. So if you want anything off the Xbox 360 store, make sure you get it this week. You lying son of a gun. Cash is always out here looking so armed and dangerous. Here we go. So you have to say heavyweight tag team champions because New Japan is the junior heavyweight. Says who? <laughs> Shivani's trying not to break there. They haven't defended him yet. So now maybe, maybe right now I'm making a big mistake. Maybe the worst decision of my life. Start up next week. Right here tomorrow in Texas. FTR showed to the AEW World Tag Team Championship this weekend. And it ends. Next week, we will be live in the ring as we start. All right, well, we got our tag match settled up again. Is Dax a priest? Is he a per is he a perisher? Now give me that grace of God. Give it to you. Give it to me in the soul. And I'll just give it. Reach out. And give me all your support. And I will take you to the promised land. All right. 
interesting promo to end the top of the first or end of the first hour here. All right, Sheeta, what do you got to say after you took out Sky Blue here? So her first match back is going to be against Sheeta? Okay, so hear me out here. We got Suzuki Jericho. We got Sheeta Baker. And blood and guts. We're not going to need that much more. Like, there's only going to be like three or four segments on that show before blood and guts. That's going to be a complete hour. So, if some of the things look a little weird here tonight, you also got to remember there has been travel issues the last few days due to. Uh, Basically, anybody with Windows 11 uh, business mo version, uh, your computers were bricked completely, so you couldn't even use them. So, Oh, well, this is going to be fun. You know, Ishii against Roderick. I do like the background. I do like the setup a little bit. The elevated ramp is a good idea. Like I said, it gives it that New Japan feel. I don't know how many of these people in Texas know about Tomohiro that much. But you got to admit, AEW's gotten a pretty big uh, gold star on them this summer with the fact that we're getting Suzuki and Ishii for the summer. While uh, New Japan's getting Takeshita for the G1. Then they got uh, John Moxley earlier, of course, with the title reign and such. Like it, it's always great to get some bunch of G or a bunch of NXT guys to go back and forth for exhibition, but stuff on your main roster and some big names. So yeah, if you weren't around earlier and what they were referring to here, Mark Briscoe officially calls Tomohiro Ishii as Big Tom. I love work texts when you're like three hours after work. These guys are just unloading on each other right now. Once again, everybody, just thank you for hanging out here tonight. It's it's a hot night. It's a busy night. We got Slammiversary and we got uh, WNBA All-Star Game tonight. And we're watching a bunch of guys chop the living hell out of each other. I 
I love it. I love it. Ishii just says nope to that chop and takes Strong right down. Yeah, I'm assuming Hologram's only gonna get like a quick match out of it. They gotta make they get, they basically gotta give Sun the squash right away. Roddy, you gotta do set a lot harder than that. Nishi's like, what the hell are you doing? And this crowd is amazing. Jesus. If I was Roddy, I would ask the referee to break him up further. And she just beals him back in. Yeah, Jesus. Once again, tried those shots, it just doesn't work. They gotta find some way to make uh, Strong look strong, no pun intended, going into next Friday's match against Briscoe, right? Because right now, this ain't doing much for him. Yeah, they were asking, actually. <laughs> Nigel was thinking that he was actually going to do a dive. Ishii doesn't do dives. <laughs> Even Tony's admitting. He barely walks. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I love the picture of picture part here. When they do live, because they can't go picture to picture with us. So apparently what they're doing for this is they are, uh, they're going to have collision here every Saturday until All In. Until the Saturday of All In. I do believe they're having it out in England. And then uh, they're filming a whole bunch of ROH stuff here, including Death by Dishonor coming up next Friday, so... So yeah, they're going to be doing this on. They're going to be doing the tapings on Sunday, I do believe. I can't see this game much more than five more minutes, based on the fact we got three more matches left. Because that lumberjack match should take a little bit more time, with the fact that they can't actually walk to the outside. It's going to be nice to see Roderick as uh, ROH champion and maybe maybe they'll find a way to keep the Bang Bang Gang down there as, or uh, the Undisputed Kingdom all in ROH completely. Because really, as, as much as I love Taven and Bennett, I'd love to see them get a little bit more time over on the ROH TV. i like to see any champions get out there on a little more consistent basis. The only one that's been out there consistently is Athena and I don't think she's winning a title or keeping her title on Friday. 
I'd love to see Athena move on because she's basically faced everybody already. I think it's time she sort of interjects herself into this main this main roster conundrum that they got going on right now. Oh, Ryan tried to go for the face and just before the referee saw, I just, yep, nope. It's funny how Roddy's try, trying to grab, uh, gra uh, put his legs around the waist and he, she's blocking it with his leg. God, do I love a good power slam. Just a quick scoop and a slam and just wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Now, now I just got to learn, you know, why use three syllables when one syllable could work just as well? Why is Strong, strong going back to this again? Isn't this something we just happened just before? You see, look at the ref. He's like, eh, yeah, no, you ain't doing nothing to me. Jesus! Strong so trying to land on his feet. He got a straight on his face. Like, I'm assuming we get hologram next. Just to... Just so everybody get through the what the hell is that thing going on. Oh God. Oh God. Jesus. Ishii with the power there. We're going to have to teach, uh, Tony, that an avalanche superplex is just a superplex. But, you know, considering as many years as he's been at it, the fact that he's actually got the energy for it now, all the kudos to him. Oh, just out of nowhere, he's going to hit this. No. Missed. And she just throws the head out. Let me just randomly ram my head into your face. High angle slam. Olympic style. The end of heartache. Oh. Roddy's probably turning to Ishii. He's like, you're supposed to... You were, you were supposed to stay down, damn it. You're also not going to get Ishii here as a... Uh... 
Really? Really? I, I love that he got to the knee and Ishii just said nope. Yeah, I know you can't have Roddy lose here. Oh, there they are. Oh. All right, that was an abrupt finish. Yeah, there's no way Briscoe keeps that title on Friday. Sorry about the yawn, folks. It's been a long day. Oh, there's the music. I love the, te the team name, the conglomeration. Who would name themselves that? Only Mark, Br only Mark Briscoe would. So I am thinking maybe next week we will do a watch log of the uh, pay-per-view. If I'm going to get it for free on my uh, Ring of Honor subscription, maybe wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. This was just such an unbelievable match between these two. And MJF's going to be opening up the show next week. And then he's also, uh, MJF's also announced that he's going to be Arena Mexico uh, the day before SummerSlam with CMLL. Hell of a promo out of a out of a cool tag. Easy dub. Oh wow. All right. You want to get somebody uh somebody in there to take on a new luchador coming in? The post god is actually a pretty damn good choice. This is pretty cool that the uh, eSports arena to do. Yeah, it's essentially he did go through the forbidden door, the AAA to AEW. And the fact that Gringo Loco's in there for his first opponent, that is a great choice. If you're going to have a jobber match, that's the guy you use. Nope. Yeah, it is. This guy is known as the post god. And if you didn't know what a post is, it's uh, essentially a wrestling term so that the luchador can bounce off and work with him. 
use him as the base for a lot of his stuff. So if you want a guy to make him look good, that's what you do. What the? All right. Woo, 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 woo. We got to start making helicopter sounds here going around. I'll fake out one way, then I'll skid the cat, then I'll come back in, then I'll jump over the... I'll grab just throw it, throw it, caution to the wind here throughout the entire match. I love this. The thing is, a hurricanrata for a luchador is like a transition move. That's a nice shot. Stand him up. Oh, wow. Okay, let's go. Gringo getting himself some. Interesting that we're getting three hours of wrestling next week on the old Saturday, so. Hologram's got to fix those knee pads next for next show. Oh my goodness, all over the place. Oh, uh, you hear it? No, I'm over here. No, I'm over here. No, I'm over here. That that's Tony Schiavone's equivalent to what a maneuver. All right, just snaps another one off of there. Yeah, I think they're got, they got to wrap this up quick here. We got two more matches to go yet. Airplane spit into the blue thunder bomb. Takeshita might not be that happy about that. Portal bomb, okay. But yeah, it's great to see Gringo Loco out here getting a little shine. And Hologram actually had a decent debut. I like the fact that it's all collision because of all the scuttlebutt of it being Sammy Guevara, of all the scuttlebutt being Ricochet. When we all know that it's neither. It's an actual wrestler out of Mexico. You put on collision, it's not as over... 
overpopulated in terms of viewers. Oh, here we go. All right, what do we got? The storm has arrived. One of the greatest legacies in all of professional wrestling. Right here in Texas. Dallas, Texas. The Von Erics, the Rhodes, together for the first time since 1977. I'm looking forward to this, all right? I promise you. You just wait and watch. You just watch. I'm going to let you guys try to get the show to work. So, did they sign him? So did they sign the Von Eriks? Because that would be a hell of a get. Like, I know Motor City Machine Guns was the classy, the top of the class pick in terms of tag teams. But bringing in the Von Eriks for a promotion that... Watching a promotion uh, thrive in tag team wrestling a little bit more. And watching the Von Eriks, who, whose fans thrive on history... And being part of the smarter culture compared to the casual culture that that, that appears in, uh, in, in WWE. This actually could be a hell of a signing if they actually do sign them. They could just be here as part of a, a one month deal here in Texas. But I would love to see him signed overall here. As you see the lumberjacks outside the ring. I love watching Dustin shoot down everyone on Twitter about his contract and being unhappy in AEW. Everybody's going to come up with their own stories. And if they can get clicks out of it, it's going to, if that's what they're going to run with, right? But now we're just, the, the way that Dustin just, doesn't want to put up with that stuff. I, I think a lot of wrestlers are getting into that mode now of just not dealing with that stuff anymore. Like, they're just straight out saying, no, 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 no more of this BS coming from these wannabe reporters, right? And if they got the green light to say something, well, let them say something. As we're getting ready for our uh, lumberjack match here, which you know there's going to be some insanity that goes with it. And there's probably going to be a heel turn somewhere in here. Because I think Thunder Rosa is going to think she has everything going so well that all of a sudden she could get thwacked. I'd love to see Rachel be the one to do it after what happened last week. Once again, everybody, thank you for stopping by here. Always appreciate it. We do this every Wednesday and Saturday uh, for AEW Dynamite and AEW Collision. Uh, the next exception I can throw up for that one will be uh, Friday, September 6th, when Collision uh, runs on the Friday prior to All Out. Unfortunately, I will be at SmackDown in Edmonton.
Yep. <laughs> wow that is some math for you sir the thing to know about friday is it was two days after wednesday Grinders worldwide. <laughs> nice. Then, of course, we got Thunder Rosa coming out here with her. You gotta know she's gonna if she's in Texas she's gonna do, she's gonna go up to a hundred percent in terms of the gear right. Oh, Gigi's out there. Millwood's represent local representation. I didn't even recognize her, and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, there we go. Just announced for, uh, she's going to be wrestling in a card here at Edmonton at the uh, biggest shopping mall in, uh, well, I guess it's in Canada now. Used to be formerly the world. Yeah, these two have been having some great fights with some weird endings. And Rachel's so borderline disgusted after getting beaten up by her yes last week. Theoretically, she'll be thrown right back into the ring. Now, this is something I appreciate in a blood feud like this. One thing that drove me nuts is when they actually set up to try to do a lockup and all that when they're in a big, deep feud. Like, why? Get out there and start beating the living crap out of it. And Shafir's like, no, no, you don't bother her. <laughs> you notice Taya tried grabbing the ankle there on the first shot? You notice Rachel didn't do anything after getting pie face there. I just, I got, I got a weird feeling. No, I don't have any inside knowledge whatsoever. Good job on Deanna to get in there to catch her. We almost ran into a situation like we had earlier tonight. Oh, God. Vintage Perozo. Oh, 
No, no, we're gonna call Lumberjacks just to keep, you know, everything's the same. Well, Rachel just called that nerve up. And good old Taya getting involved. Somebody's getting suplexed to the outside. Yep, yeah, here it is. Jesus! Well, so much for a lumberjack match. Oh, God. Calm down. Nigel's going to get too excited here. Nah. See? Nigel's already on it. I wouldn't. I'd just get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, it's good. It's good the fact that you get to bring so many people out too. And you don't have your A-list out there, right? Like you're watching title contentions and all that stuff. Ah, good old Tony. Get, call it out, Nigel. Yeah, we're only, what, three, four weeks away from All In? And it's going to be so nice to be an afternoon show. And we're going to have... I guess i got to talk to you, Bobby McGee, if you want to join us. Right now, so far, Zodiac and Kayla J have given me a soft commitment to wanting to be a part of this. I going to see if you're going to get in. I'm going to see if Andre wants in. I want to see if anybody else wants in. We're going to have just a good old communal chat through the whole thing. That's going to be a, a huge couple weeks. Yeah, for all in. The, for all in. Okay, you're cool. That's easy enough. Yeah, it's because it's an afternoon show, so you don't have to worry about the evening part, like running late. I do believe it starts 1130 your time. So. And everybody decides to beat each other up on the outside. It's the only weekend in August you had nothing going on. Hey, let's give you a gold coin for that. But yeah, it looks like you got something going on now. So yeah, um, there's going to be at least three guests. I'm looking to maybe get a fourth. I got to check Twitch and see if I could do a fifth, maybe even. I think I might max it out at four and just have the four of uh, five of us again, essentially. Uh, just talk it all about all in wrestling and I I'm sure we'll get off topic a few hundred times as we go along here, so. I have World of Softball City Color Concert at a wide array of my bros trailer. The oh, nice.
Diamante tried. Yeah, I know. We got SummerSlam. We got... Well, we got a big time coming up there because... Uh, plan is right now we have All In for that uh, Sunday afternoon. Then the following week is when we're going to have the debut of How the Ref Would Book Challenge. Vic and Kayla are going to get their videos to me and I'm going to get that video put together. So that should be released the week of All Out. Depends on my game times for Worlds. I'm miss could play at any freak yeah that's true i remember refing uh i used to be a slow pitch umpire for a year and i will never forget doing my uh 24 hour tournaments two years ago I had a game of midnight yeah like because i was new they would always give me like the give me like the two to six shift in the morning Good old Tony, a move. Alberta always holds the co-ed worlds. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I am slow pitch for one year. The amount of abuse officials got was nothing compared to any other sport that I've dealt with. So I just, yeah, that's enough for me. Wasn't worth the headache. I, I love how Peraza is just vicious the way that she is. Yeah, they're both going to end up out there. Everybody's hollering. Well, here we go again. Like bowling pins. There's an ump every year that tells us anything, swearing and arguing, you're out, and your team forfeits. It get back, yeah. No, I've tossed the the one that set me off, the one that finally got me an umping uh, slow pitch. I tossed this guy out because he he wouldn't just shut up and stop arguing with me the whole night. So finally, I'm like, no, you're done. You're out. He grabs his daughter, which couldn't have been more than a year and a half. Said, yeah, daddy can't play because this mean guy just kicked him out of the game. And that's why I'm like, yeah, no, we're done here. All right, another screwy ending. That she, he obviously taught his daughter that he can say and do what he wants and I'm sorry to port. Exactly. So I just, the thing is, there was no consequences for outside of that. Like, I've had worse happen to me. But the fact they just, when I reported what happened, they're just like, meh, it happened. Oh, well. Why is Kip Sabian sitting there randomly against the wall? 
That makes me wonder. Just random things like that, like it's sitting right there. But yeah, well, my ventures into slow pitch umpiring didn't get into much, and yeah, it ended up only being one season, so. Uh, but yeah, as we're getting into our main event, which actually is going to be a lot shorter than I thought it would be, probably only going to be about 10 minutes. Uh, just a quick wrap of what we're going to be doing here in the next week. Uh, right after this, we're going to take about a five-minute break here uh, so we can... Uh, Unload, reload, fire up the Xbox, get everything ready for uh, WWE 2K24 My GM mode as we have the uh, PLE Backlash coming up. Uh, tomorrow night, all goes well. Uh, plan is to stream a little MLB The Show tomorrow night. Probably look at around 9 o'clock uh, Eastern, 7 o'clock Mountain. No stream on Monday. Got to get my editing done. Uh, Tuesday night, we're looking at uh, one more grinding session for Tears of the Kingdom. I uh, want to finish up the Master Koga storyline as well as uh, maybe get a few more shrines to get a few hearts put together. And then uh, Wednesday, we have AEW Dynamite Blood and Guts, followed by week six of WW2K24 My GM mode. The fallout from Paul Heyman's crappiness. And then uh, Thursday, we take on, well, hopefully we take on Ganondorf. I do think that we're going to be able to get time to get that done. And then uh, once we get that done, we're probably, we're probably going to take about two weeks where we're going to bring back the Backbreaker Fight Club instead of having uh, an RPG going on here. Mainly so I could also get my sounds adjusted for the next game that's coming up. Because I want to move into... I want to make sure that the alerts for... Uh, alerts for the game that we're doing for the RPG sort of match what they're doing, so... And I think where we're going to go after we're done... Uh, after we're done, uh, Zelda is going into Stellar Blade, so... But then, of course, with all the fighting game news that's coming out, I want to start working on my... If you listen to the uh, Repairman the Game with uh, Street Fighter the movie, I did announce that I'm actually working on some pre-produced material. Uh, because I screwed up, I figured out which weekend Evo was. It's actually this weekend. I thought it was August long weekend. Uh, I'm going to be coming out after we're done. After Evo's all done and summed up and everything that's come out, I'm going to come out with uh, my top reasons why... Fighting game fans have a lot to look forward to coming up in the next year here. I'd love if it's t TV time remaining and it just goes right to uh, right to a time limit. You notice how they only have three titles instead of nine there? This is actually a very genius move for what they did. Not only did they clean up a technicality that was was horrible during full gear with the substitute champion, they've decided to clean up that rule, which I feel, I bravo completely about it. They also were able to get rid of the scissor titles and... Uh, the other version of the title, or the, I guess it's the, I guess the ROH titles are gone too at this point. They're just going to have one universal one. I'm assuming they're not going to be able to get a spotlight the way they need to for this entrance. Ah, oh, not bad. They did do a decent job of it.
Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. It, it might only be 10 minutes, but it'll definitely be a lot of fun. Be interesting to see which team's going to be end up getting the titles here at this point. Because the guns just feel normal with having those titles, but you also have the patriarchy having a feud with uh, House of Black. You have the Bag Bag Gang having a feud with the House of Black. And Juice rip ripping the shirt will uh, get over. I want to give extra kudo points to uh, Christian Cage. It has got to be hotter than balls down there right now, and he's actually wrestling in a turtle deck. Because one thing I've noticed during these matches is the referee is, like, pouring sweat. Oh, they did give it overtime. Okay. Hopefully the TSN feed doesn't cut out. It's already cut out three times for me tonight, so. So they're taping on Thursday. Yeah, that's smart. They're, uh... They're, just because nobody's going to show up for SummerSlam night, right? Like, it just me. As much as we hate a lot of the things that WWE does, they still print money. They'll still sell out Cleveland. I haven't heard whether they have or not yet, but. But one thing I have seen a lot of promotions do now to sort of promote that sellout argument that they have. They will, they'll close off some of the seating and say it's for production. So then, uh, so once those sell out, they can open their, their section, sell that out and just go until they sell out every section that they can. And then they can call it an official sellout, right? It's a bit of a douchey move, if you ask me. It's like I've seen people brag about a sellout when they get 300 people in the building. For an indie show, like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, most indie halls, you can fit five, 600 people, but if you're only going to get three, like, I, I get it. You can't sell any more tickets, but maybe try to find some place where you can. Unless you're making money off at hand over fist, like you got a free venue or something, feel free, but I'm not. And now Juice is biting. Now Juice is going to try some momentum and... Oh, never mind. I'm actually surprised the patriarchy has stayed in place the way that it has for as long as it has. I thought Kill Switch would be long gone by now, but... It's actually working out. So they admit they are making it official. The return match for Britt Baker is going to be Wednesday against Sheeta. That's going to be fun. That's like having two of your best friends going into a match. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then you're going to have your hero Suzuki maybe dis disinfect Chris Jericho from AEW, which we can only pray for. And then yeah, you get you get the MJF interview and then blood and guts. Oh, 
Oh yeah, the Mariah May. New Mariah May promo segment. You actually get to see what she really is like, what she was like in stardom, which... Somebody hold Nigel back. Because I will say stardom had certain ways of making people uh, wiggle that line between decency and not. With some of the gimmicks they had, so I, I'd be a little careful. Nigel just goading Tony left, right, and center. I love this. And just a two count there. I just called Luchasaurus just for the heck of it at this point. This crowd is definitely a lot more into it now than they were all night. Colton Gunn getting a hot tag. That's something I didn't expect to see every day. Like, in terms of skill, I think Colton's got everything that it takes. He even does the Euro step when he does the neck breaker there. That is hilarious. Sort of a fake out move, right? Where he ducks. Takes a hard step to the right, hard step to the left, gets around, hooks the arm, drops it. It's funny, Colton's got the skills, Austin's got the uh, personality, I think. Oh God. That wasn't just a little overboard. That was a huge miss. I wish that AEW would go with the New Japan rules. Since they very rarely do disqualifications, just have it in there. You get disqualified, you lose your title. It's an extra little wrinkle you can bring in there, but it, it does hamper the booking a little bit, but they so rarely use the disqualification rule to ring a bell. I, I think it would actually make it a little unique. Oh my God, what a dastardly jerk. The back rake. So is Colton going to get a double hot tag out of this? Another shot to the chest. Like I'd assume Nick Quaid's the one that's going to get covered if they're if uh, the bag bag gang continue. Looks like they're going to be getting a little bit of overtime here. It, it sucks, but I can see why just because of uh, having to try to organize everything to happen with Sheeta there. Or no, Sky Blue, sorry. Oh, the juice gets the hot tag. Nick 
Juice just unloading here. I love how he asked the referee to make sure he's ready before he actually gets another cover. Then you know there's no way that's winning. Oh, a little heartfelt moment. And that's what's going to cost him here. Let's just dump him into the first row on a table. Now Nick Wade's isolated in the rig. That this pretty much makes sense. I love how he calls it the jackhammer type of maneuver. It's a fucking jackhammer. Uh oh. Well, not anymore. I think it was supposed to be an atomic drop, and Juice missed it. Nick Wade tried for that. Nope. All right, give the kid some credit. Kicked out a two. All right, I. We'll see how long this takes now. We're, they're got to be getting close to the end here. Oh, God. Christian got the tag. All right, so he's going to take the cover. Yeah, you couldn't have finished there. We already had a match finish with the Frog Splash. Phoenix won tonight with a frog splash. You don't finish the same, same finisher twice. There goes Nick. Oh, and the head butt knocks Christian out. Let's go. And Nick's in there. Oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. The Brazzers mom with some extra cream on the outside. Mama Wayne in the final assist. Christian can't even hang on to all the titles. Do they just have a power outage? Or is there something going on? Or 
or the day or is that the signal for everybody to get the hell out <laughs> all right a really good episode of uh of collision tonight i I, th I thought it was really fun the whole thing uh, a little bit of a once again a little off ending there with uh the women's matches she did sky blue you can't help it sky's hurt i hope she gets better i hope I hope everything's okay where she's had a real rough year this year. Uh, you had uh, Roderick Strong get the victory over uh, Tomohiro Ishii going into that title match next Friday. You got uh, that, I guess, Taya and uh, Deanna are going to be working together now. Sort of makes sense. Sort of that, yeah. We'll, we'll see how that branches out now that we got this Lumberjack match out of the way here. And then, yeah, Phoenix gets a win over Tony Deese, which it's always good to see Phoenix in action. And then uh, that main event, well, I, I guess the opening match we got to talk about as well here, just absolute jab-packed tons of fun there. So, And, uh, yeah, I guess from uh, and then that main event, what, what about five minutes over, which... Considering they were trying to regroup and figure out what happened uh, with the whole uh, sh with Sky Blue and stuff, actually made a lot of sense how to set that up. But all in all, a ton of fun tonight. A really good couple hours to watch, and really enjoyed hanging out with each and every one of you here. So.